frequently we see new bikes on my YouTube channel here, usually they're a little bit higher end, carbon frames, big bomber enduro bikes. Many of you have asked about the more budget oriented bikes like the Ripley AF, which I really like riding, but I had the unique opportunity to try something that's even more attainable. So let's check this thing out. Before we do peek into this box, that's pretty cheesy. Before we do peek into this box to see this Marin Rift Zone 2, I wanna give a big thanks to Jensen USA who sponsored this video, making it all possible. Jensen's a leading online retailer for mountain bikes, parts, and accessories here in the United States of America, and they're a dealer for Marin bikes. I'm gonna to link to the Marin Rift Zone 2 in the YouTube description just below. It takes you over to Jensen USA, and anything you then purchase will directly help support my channel. That's exactly how we were able to make these videos. Big thanks to all of you. Thanks to Jensen. Thanks to Marin for loaning me this bike. Let's pop this thing open and get a look at it. I want to mention that when you get a complete bike from Jensen USA, it comes in a Jensen USA box and they've done a pre-assembly on it. I was able to borrow this bike directly through Marin. So it just came in a regular bicycle shop style box rather than that complete packaging that Jensen USA offers. That said, it's not gonna be too bad to get this thing rideable. Oh man. All right. Let's start clipping some of these. Part of me wants to ride this bike stock, but then these smaller casing tires, while they're great for most people in most places, for the purpose-built mountain bike trails we have around here, we usually use a much heavier duty tire that weighs like twice what these things weigh. So personal preference there. So this is the same kind of bike as famous YouTubers like Mark Jones and Mike Matthews and, uh, oh yeah, Cody Kelly used to ride one of these. Uh, Warner, Kyle Warner rides one of these. These things have been all over the place. Of all the bikes you guys have seen on my YouTube channel here, this Rift Zone 2 is gonna compare most closely to the Ripley AF. When you look at the geometry numbers, the Rift Zone 2 is a little bit more, a little bit less money. So the Ripley AF is a 120 rear, 130 up front type bike. Has kind of a shorter reach, 450, and the wheelbase for my size medium is just under 1190. This guy is, I think, a 1205 wheelbase, 1210 right in there. It's a 460 reach, just a little bit bigger. Same head tube angle, but 130, 140 millimeters of travel. Question is, will this ride as good as the Ripley AF rides using its more traditional four bar, almost, it's not even a horse link, <laughs> single pivot. We're gonna learn something here. Hopefully it's interesting and fun. Since you always ask, I'm five foot eight, this is a size medium bike and I weigh 170 pounds. All right, we got this thing together. Let's take it out on the trail and see how this thing rides. Let's get pedaling. Well, today is gonna be my first trail ride on the Rift Zone. This is a quasi local spot. Let's uh, spin on up and see how this thing climbs and then try some really, really fun descending. So that's about a 1500 foot climb to get up here. Beautiful puddles. And it's not too bad on the Marin. It pedals decent. It's got a, I don't know, somewhat firm pedaling feel, no pedal bob or anything. Bike just kind of feels like most of my bikes when you're sitting on it. Mid-length cockpit, comfy. The tele wheelbase is not short, nor is it huge. I like it, good overall feel. I don't know this trail real well, but when I did ride it, I thought it was sweet. Let's get some. Oh, those brakes are not as strong as I'm used to. <laughs> All right, okay. Right away, I like this bike. The specs, like the components, the wheels, tires, brakes, all that, it's like, you know, the 25-ish, $100 mark. Most of the bikes I ride are, you know, three times that. All right, this bike gets it. Cool. And that's just kind of my little, my world that I live in. I'm very fortunate to live in that world, but that's where I am. Now that said, you don't need to spend $10,000 to have a good riding experience. That trail was absolutely ripping, and this thing was 95% as solid as most of my much more expensive bikes. Hello everyone, we haven't done this in a little while, but let's have a fireside chit chat about the Marin Rift Zone I've been riding here. I've been riding the Marin Rift Zone completely stocked down quite a few of the local trails back home and 
It's a good bike. It's a really good bike. I did swap out the tires as I showed you all. The stock V Tire Co. tires, they say uh, tacky compound and they probably are for what V normally does. Just trying to squeeze them, they feel so hard. And then trying to squeeze this Maxxis, what is this, Max Grip ass guy. It's just so incredibly soft compared. Like you can see it gushing out. There's none of that happening there. These are so much firmer than these. So before I ride this thing, I am going to do a tire swap out. I know it's not gonna be exactly the stock bike. Well, I'd rather test the bike than the tires. Swapped out the tires, proceeded to go on a bunch of rides, completely stock besides tires. I did swap out the stem to a little bit stiffer unit, very minor change. And the bike works really good stock. What ends up happening is the bike's geometry is so good and the suspension is so capable that you can really start charging downhill and you can ride it like a much bigger bike. And that's a lot of fun until it isn't. And it doesn't get fun when you go to slow down and you can't slow down. It's an outside line I'm not doing. Oh, I'm squeezing as hard as I can on the brakes. All right, let's try different pads and rotors. I'm one of the first rides on this bike. Um, I was at some local, like even shuttleable trails, um, single black diamond, nothing too crazy, nothing too gnarly. And after the first minute or so, the brakes had faded almost to the point that I had to use three fingers to slow down. So I squirted some water on them to see what would happen. And oh my gosh, it was just complete smoke show. Oh, my fingers hurt from squeezing the brakes so hard. <laughs> Did you guys see that? Oh my gosh. That's crazy. I've never seen that before. So those stock brakes, they're Shimano MT201s. They're just two piston. Um, I went and bought some MTX Gold, I want to say. Uh, more aggressive pads. And then I used proper Ice Tech rotors, upgraded those. Both of these are substantially more expensive than the stock setup, but I was doing all I could to get the brakes to work better because I couldn't really stop with one finger on the brake levers once I've been going down a steep hill for more than like, I don't know, a minute or whatnot. And with that combination, aftermarket metal pads and Shimano Ice Tech rotors, the brakes are working better. That said, I probably need to do more with the brakes because there's been many situations today where I haven't stopped when I thought I would. I was trying to stop and I couldn't. <laughs> Yeah, I think we're pushing them beyond their like intended use at the moment by mountain biking. Long story short, I swapped on the, some different brakes to get a higher end brake setup that should be more reliable. I, but I thought I'd be spicy and try something new and I bought the Magura MT7s. Slow clap. Riley's getting attacked. Hey, come on man, it's my slippers. <laughs> All right, well. This bike's riding great, but there's a huge issue I gotta take care of, the brakes. As you do, I logged on to JensenUSA.com, and then I saw this very popular brake set from Magura called the MT7. It was on sale, and these have been on sale for a little bit. So we're gonna try the Magura MT7s on the Rift Zone, and uh, hopefully that gives us more confidence to really do the rest of the bike justice. Oh. And just like that, our internal routing for our rear hydraulic line done. <laughs> Get your butt out of my face. Man, I haven't bled a Magura brake since like 2012 or something. It's been a long time. All right, it does work. Threw those things on, went filming with Riley, and halfway through the day, the rear brake lever starts pulling to the handlebar. So I just tossed these MT-07 brakes on, and at first the back brake felt great. You know, had plenty of power, was easy to use. Lever throw was a little more than I wanted, but it was close enough, so running it. Front brake had kind of too much lever throw, not quite dialed in yet this morning. Over the course of the last few hours, the front brake is now perfect and feels money. The back brake went from like safe and reliable to now, the lever just completely, you pull it to the bar, and you get nearly nothing. You can feel it like grabbing a little bit, but 
I've played with the reach adjust and yeah, the back brake's essentially non-existent now. So this ride's over. Gotta go back to the shop and figure out how to get this brake working or maybe it's a dud, I don't know. That's honestly a little bit disappointing. And I think the next brakes that'll go on here will be either TRP, Shimano, or maybe we'll try some Haze. I don't know. With that happening, I just could not trust those brakes. And I wanted to go someplace really special for this cool bike. So Logan and I came down here to a really cool spot out in the mountains where I've wanted to ride this bike for a while now. And I'm glad I came, but I could not afford to have a brake failure up on the edge of one of these cliff tops up at 6,000 feet high. Like, not safe. So I did what I didn't want to do and I swapped on some much more expensive brakes. Dior brakes are fine, SLX brakes are fine. I didn't have access to either of those. In my stash of parts, I had some XTR brakes, so I threw those on here. I'm sorry everyone, I know they're expensive, but it's what I had. So I threw on my XTR brakes, and while I was at this, I cased the big jump with the stock wheels, and I could feel the back wheel loosened up quite a bit from that case. Yeesh. I needed one more pedal stroke than I was able to get. Tried to pump as good as I could and compress it on the things and <laughs> came up a little bit short. Better than a lot short. <laughs> I didn't have time to go ahead and tension the rear wheel and retrue it. I just grabbed another set of wheels that I've been riding. These are the Santa Cruz Reserve Carbon wheels. And I need to put miles on these to test them out. I'm doing a review video on the Santa Cruz Reserve Carbon wheels. The wheels are great. I've tried them on the Ibis Ritmo, the Yeti SB160, and now here on the Rift Zone 2. But I also realized that for today's trails, these wheels, and especially these tires, were gonna be perfect. So it all worked out. So hunting season just started and kind of like hiking season's tailing off. The rains have been hitting here and it's generally been kind of cold and nasty, but somehow we stumbled into an amazing fall day. Some of the larch trees are still yellow golden. The cottonwoods are all yellow. And we sent it on a legit Alpine backcountry ride on the Marin Rift Zone. I think it's pretty cool. I can take a $2,400 bike into the woods that deep and the thing can handle this well. The geometry on this bike is so spot on. I wouldn't really change anything with the geometry. Regardless of budget, that bike is built really, really nicely. It's only a 130 travel bike, so you can't send it like massive or whatnot. There's so much support in that rear end. I can send it pretty irresponsibly off random little hucks and I don't bottom out way too easily. It's actually like pretty spot on for my weight and riding style. I'm 170 pounds. The Marzocchi Z2 fork with the rail damper, 140 travel, that thing works killer overall as a trail bike setup. And that's spot on for most of the ridings that someone in the Northwest, for instance, is gonna be doing. You don't really need 170, 180 travel unless you're truly just sending it with reckless disregard for personal well-being. When you're out in the backcountry and riding proper mountain bike trails, you're not gonna send it like that. You're just gonna pump around and have a great time. At this point, the reserve wheels feel like they've got a little bit more forgiveness than some of the aluminum spoked i9 wheels. And on this bike, this aluminum bike, that felt really appropriate. Shorter travel bike, a little bit softer wheels. It all felt like very predictable. I was really happy with the overall stiffness and feel on this bike. I thought everything would be more dainty and lightweight and like rinky dink given the shorter travel, but no, it's not. It rides torsionally pretty similar to the bigger travel bikes. Those of you who are quite eagle-eyed might notice I also left on the giant 2.6 size WTB tough casing tires. I did that for all the rocks up here in the Alpine. Closer to home, as things start to get a lot more wet, all those slippery roots mean that the softer rubber compound Maxxis tires have a touch more traction than these big 2.6 tires. However, when you're in the dry rocks, that extra flotation of the oversized 2.6 tires helps quite a bit, especially on a short travel bike. When it comes to cornering, the geometry is exactly where I want it. I can just give it a little push right into the turn. I don't even consciously weight the front wheel much. I just kind of stay centered and get low. And this thing hooks and grabs and just goes right where I need it to. Uh, it's a great handling bike. We filmed a bunch of wheelies today because I love doing wheelies, that's how I ride. Between that 2.6 back tire, that proper Shimano rear brake that I just know and love, and then the chainstay length, I felt like I could wheelie anything on the Rift Zone too. And that's pretty cool. Not a whole lot of bikes have that feel for me. So this thing's top notch with wheeling. All said and done, I know I had to make a couple little changes to this thing. I don't know what that does to the pricing. 
You could totally just tension and true the stock wheels and make them stiffer, throw some beefier tires on for true backcountry days, whatever. You don't need XDR brakes. You'd be fine with Dior, at better yet, SLX brakes. But those are very minor changes. Otherwise, it's pretty cool to see that a bike is just this turnkey to go and shred as hard as you want for such an approachable price point. So big thanks to Marin for loaning me this bike. I've had a lot of fun on it. Big thanks to Jensen USA for making this all possible. I've linked to the Marin Rift Zone over at Jensen USA in the description down below. And anything you purchase from that link in the description, whether it's brake pads or chain lube or whatever, or a, a Marin Rift Zone, that'll help support my channel. That's a big part of how we can make all this video stuff happen. Um, everyone give a big thanks to Logan and to Riley for both helping film this video. Most importantly, whatever bike you can afford, whatever bike you have, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you get out there and send it and just get it dialed in for your liking. Because at the end of the day, it's about experiencing the coolest trails and the coolest places more than it is what bike you're riding. But this bike's pretty good for getting me where I want to go. All right, thanks everyone. Hit the subscribe button. I'll see you in the comments. Peace and wheelies.